Gundam.tk presents Legend Gundam. Hey again everybody, it's Robert184, 2 hours 2 bs Gundam.tk, which is GundamReviews.net, and I've already done the unbox for the Legend Gundam 1100th non-grade kit. Now it's time to take a look at the individual plates and just remember that this one's got a couple extras because if you bought it when it first came out or if you find it used like I did, it's going to come with the parts that give you the parts for an action base to make this guy go up. Aerial, which was a big deal back in 2006. To open up the box... And it Inside you'll be treated to a colorful A-plate, which is going to have red, which is also on another plate here, but all the blue that's in the kit is contained on this A-plate, along with this clear part for the energy shield, which is looking pretty sharp. You can see some big parts here for the chest, and something that I did not realize up until this moment is that Legend actually has four parts to his V-fin, including these two antennas, which just stick straight up. And something that I'm pleasantly surprised about is just this white color you're going to get for, for the V-fin, for the forearms, and for the neck part there, although that's looking pretty big. I hope it's going to get covered up without needing paint there, and it looks like a couple parts for the weapons, but it's cool to see that much white to go along with this very grey mobile suit. Also looking at the red parts, you can see that there's just a lot of small parts there. You're going to have what you need for the jewel and for the goatee, but it's great to see such small parts despite this not being a master grade. The B-plate gets into that synonymous grey and it's missing some plastic down there, which is hopefully going to save the earth, I suppose. Big parts here for the backpack, you're going to have four of them, nowhere near as big as the Providence, a couple other large parts. But something that's cool to see is that it's beam sabers, or beam javelins, I believe they're called. You're going to have two here and you can actually put them together, it looks like, but you're also going to get a solid one there. It doesn't have an end on here, but it looks like that's going to be right there, so it's sort of cool that you're going to get the options. And you've got the parts here for the big dragoons that are going to go on the top. To go along with the eight dragoons that are going to go three on either side of the backpack and one on either hip, and then you're going to have some big parts there for the waist armor. More grey for the D, including the all-important head sculpt here. The back is going to have three wide stripes that are sort of Adidas style. The front face mask is not going to have any grills on it. The head is looking good. You can see the Vulcans there and some chances for black lines if you want to go put that in. Parts for the waist, and you're going to have the belly there along with the leg parts, and then the side of the shins are sort of cool because they're going to have these big deep channels there if you want to put the beam javelins away to go along with the parts needed for the feet. A small E plate to go along with the red that you saw on the A plate, you're going to have the big parts here for the chest and feet, and it's still again cool to see that they've got a couple small parts, those ones look like they're going to go on the shoulders, but again it's that kind of attention to detail which makes me not miss the fact that this is a mass, isn't a master grade. Dark grey as opposed to the light grey that you've seen earlier here on the F plate. You're going to have the big parts for the large size beam cannon, which is going to, or the beam rifle, which is looking good. You've got the hands here, they've got four fingers locked into place there. And it's sort of cool that that neck part that I was a little bit concerned was too wide open in the white is going to have some grey, which will hopefully is just going to squeeze in there. And little details here like pipes that are supposed to look like real pipes, despite the fact that they're just molded into the plastic directly. A square G plate which is going to have the parts for the thighs and forearms and you've got a lot of little parts down here for the shoulders and things like that and maybe you can make out some of the details here that they've got all these little lines which are looking sort of cool on the shoulders and hopefully are going to look very good lined or unlined when you put it together. A small H plate wraps up the main plates and it looks like you're going to have the dragoon attachments down there along with some polycap looking parts down here which are just going to be a little bit more solid. It doesn't indicate that this is ABS. But it's interesting that this is black as opposed to the light grey that you saw on most of the plates and this dark grey. So you've got black and two shades of grey, all sort of cool in a kit this grade. In addition to those parts, you'll also be getting a regular thing of polycaps, PC-116 and SB-1 two-beam sabers here. But a slight disappointment here with the stickers, you're going to be getting some large white parts there for the beam rifle which are probably going to stand out quite a bit. You, can don't, you don't want to see that on Master Grade Freedoms and Strike Freedoms and things like that. So I suppose it's understandable that it's in a 1 100th non-grade. However, the fact that they put the white on the A-plate would have been nice if they just had it added in two more parts. However, everything's pretty standard there with the camera lenses and eyes. Going back to Gundam Wing, Bandai has tried putting lots of different things to reflect the pilots inside, and usually those are in the form of 1 20th scale, I believe. Figures that you can go and paint up, they're usually just in one color, but it's sort of cool that Seed Destiny went in an opposite direction with these character plates, which are transparent, as you may be able to make out there. And it's got a picture of the pilot in his normal suit there, along with some profile. Not very much known as about, not very much here is revealed about the mysterious Razor Burl, 
but it's looking good and for somebody like me who doesn't like to paint, I'd rather have a whole bunch of these for all my kits as opposed to figures that are just going to get bagged and put away and forgotten about. This was probably a big deal back in the summer of 2006, but you're going to be getting a very familiar action base here. You've got the regular octagon, along with all the attachment parts for the arm, which you can see the parts for here, along with the additional support leg there with its three holes there. You can fill in the middle of the octagon, and you have a nameplate, which is actually going to go back to the seals. You can put on Legend Gundam there in English or Japanese if you choose. But what is special is that you're going to get this special attachment, which allows you to take the action base and attach it to the 1-100th Strike Freedom and Destiny Gundam. And so you're going to have this one, it looks like, for the Strike Freedom. This one for the Destiny, you can see that it's just going to catch under the backpack. And when you're actually putting it together, you're going to have a clip arm to hold the legend up. You actually put this around there, which is just going to provide you a peg to put these parts in. And this is actually listed, the name of this is for the first edition of the 1-100th Legend Gundam only. So I'd imagine you wouldn't be able to pick it up anywhere else. And when you're doing your unboxing, don't forget that you're going to need this when you put the action base together. So just from the unbox, I'm already more pleased than I thought I would be just because there's so many color applications. It looks like it's got lots of details in it and little bonuses like actually having a great manual. Lots of color, lots of extra information and lots of useful information all thrown in there. Means that this should be a step up on the Providence or so I'm hoping. Well, stay tuned for the next part where I'll have the parts and we can compare those and then actually see it put together as a mobile suit. Anyway, everybody, robert 4 gundamtk thanks for checking this out. Hit like if you do. Please hit don't if you don't and subscribe if you haven't already. See everybody. Bye. You know, I have no idea what it's going to take for Mourinho to finally beat Barcelona.